Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Spider-Man's future looks promising with an announced spin-off in the works from past Spider-Man movie screenwriter Roberto Orsi. It's gonna be beyond the MCU Spider-Man 3, hopefully still coming next summer if Tom Holland can keep his mouth shut about its insane plot and not infect us with spoilers. When you look at Orsi's past work with these characters and combine that with where Marvel and Sony are likely to go for the upcoming Spider-Man 3, this news actually gives us a pretty good indication of what this spin-off could be, how connected to the MCU you it'll be, and whether it'll just pull a Morbius and paint the movie storyboards as graffiti in the background behind Jared Leto. So to understand why this Orsi spinoff news is important, we gotta rewind the clock all the way back to 2014. This was before our Lord and Savior Tom Holland was birthed as Peter Parker in the MCU. Birthed. Ugh, gross. That summer of 2014 saw the MCU expanding to new levels of greatness with Captain America Winter Soldier and Guardians of the Galaxy. Even today, both both of those movies feel so recent and essential. But that same summer, Sony attempted to launch their own separate Spider-Verse with The Amazing Spider-Man 2, a movie that feels kind of like a forgotten past. Of all live action movies with Spider-Man in the title, it made the least money, it got the worst reviews, and it so freaked out Sony that they decided to just hand over the keys of the character to Marvel. The movie starred Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker, Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy, Jamie Foxx as Electro, and Dane DeHaan as Harry Osborn, Green Goblin. His director by Mark Webb with its screenplay by Jeff Pinker, Alex Kurtzman, and Roberto Orsi, the guy writing this next spinoff. But back then, this trio had collaborated on a ton of projects, but it was this Amazing Spider-Man 2 that ended the partnership. Kurtzman wanted to continue with a third Andrew Garfield, Mark Webb Spider-Man film, while Orsi wanted to move on to producing and directing other projects. If The Amazing Spider-Man 2 had not underperformed as much as it did, and if Sony hadn't been rattled by a cyber attack months later, the Sony Spider-Verse would have been a very big deal in our lives. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 ended with a tease of the arrival of the Sinister Six, Harry Osborn and his associate Gustav Fierce, plot to assemble a band of criminals to take over New York in the absence of Spider-Man, who was MIA, mourning Gwen Stacy for like eight minutes. This Sinister Six would have been made up of Harry Osborn, Green Goblin, Paul Giamatti as the Rhino, who breaks out of prison in the final scene and battles Spider-Man, as well as Doc Ock, Vulture, Mysterio, and Kraven the Hunter. Drew Goddard was going to direct this Sinister Six movie, and it was originally set for November 2016. Goddard planned for it to be a redemption story that might not even feature Spider-Man. Spider-Man. And along with a third Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man Summer 2016, we also would have gotten Venom, a 2017 Black Cat movie written by Westworld co-creator Lisa Joy Nolan, and also in 2017, a Spider-Man 2099 film. But of course, Sony's partnership with Marvel, announced in 2015, dusted this hypothetical timeline from existence. But of course, Sony held on to some of its Spider-Man related projects, Venom and its upcoming sequel with Carnage, and Into the Spider-Verse and its upcoming sequel. But what does all this mean for Orsi's Spider-Man? Man spinoff. Which of those loose thread stories did Sony use to lure him back to the Spider-Man franchise? Look folks, when I'm holed up in this blue dungeon, it's hard to stay energized. And a big help with me staying alert is Bang Energy. Thanks to Bang Energy for sponsoring this video. There are 20 different flavors of Bang to choose from. They're all 16 ounce cans, but this one is their keto coffee flavor, Heavenly Hazelnut. It's a 15 ounce can with 300 milligrams of caffeine and 20 grams of protein. Crack it open. Yeah, I can start my day now. It's the taste of morning. It's the taste of sunrise. Uh, sunrise tastes like coffee if you're a grown up. Now that sun is being shot up into the sky with a bang. Check out Bang on Instagram. You can get 25% off your order at bang-energy.com when you use the code NEWROCKSTARS25. There you can buy cans of Bang Energy, including their sweet tea, their keto coffee flavors, rainbow unicorn, cotton candy. They got it all. You can also get clothing, fitness supplements, all kinds of stuff to be your best bang and self. Thanks again to Bang Energy for sponsoring this video. Thank you for that sip. Get 25% off at bang-energy.com using the code NEWROCKSTARS25 and follow the inventor of Bang on Instagram at bangenergy.ceo. So Roberto Orsi's Spider-Man spinoff will likely be a story that both connects to and complements the upcoming Tom Holland MCU Spider-Man 3. Our assumption for that third film is that that movie will be a Sinister Six movie based on how many villains Homecoming and Far From Home have established potentially left alive, and appear to be meeting each other in other Sony films. But based on the little we know about the MCU Spider-Man 3, it doesn't necessarily have to be a full Sinister Six story. Far From Home ended with Peter Parker outed and accused as a criminal by J. Jonah Jameson. Meanwhile, director John Watts and Tom Holland have hinted that the villain could be Kraven the Hunter, 
Set photos on other Sony films have shown Craven catering trucks, and Craven would be the perfect villain to lead a manhunt for Peter Parker on behalf of J. Jonah Jameson, perhaps an adaptation of Craven's Last Hunt. Tom Holland has also recently said that the movie's script is, quote, insane. And we broke down what that can mean in our recent quarantine approved episode of Rogue Theory. And rumors are swirling that Matt Murdock Daredevil could join the film as part of Peter Parker's legal defense. So, a Spider Man, Craven, J. Jonah Jameson story is already a delicious burrito bowl of a movie concept. Adding another iconic Marvel character like Daredevil is kind of like an extra scoop of guac that I'm not going to complain about. But then also adding the full Sinister Six, that's an additional burrito. I will also eat it, but I will not savor each ingredient as much as I will just force it into me because I will eat everything in front of me. It's also worth noting that despite Sony shelving its 2014 era Spider-Verse plan, in the years since, the studio still gradually has been building some Something close to that original plan. Vulture in Homecoming, Mysterio in Far From Home, maybe Craven in the third film, Spider-Man 2029 in the post credit scene of End of the Spider-Verse. Sony didn't shelve its Spider-Verse plan, it just went through Marvel and animation to launch versions of these characters that fans really love and want to see more of. So when it comes to this Orsi Spider-Man spinoff, a separate Sinister Six movie tops the list. Perhaps the 2014 Dahan Giamatti Sinister Six didn't seem too exciting, but hey, a Keaton Gyllenhaal Sinister Six? <laughs> and Spider-Man 3 could end with Craven driving Peter Parker out of the picture setting the stage for a Sinister Six story without Peter, but who would be the hero of that story? Well, I think Tom Holland's Spider-Man 3 will also introduce a new Spider-Man that Sony can exert greater control over in future Spider-Man movies post Tom Holland, so I'm thinking we will meet a live-action Miles Morales and or Gwen Stacy. Miles Morales has been confirmed to exist in this movie universe, with Donald Glover playing Aaron Davis in Homecoming and mentioning a nephew. I don't want those weapons in this neighborhood. I got a nephew who live here. Yeah, sorry, Miles. I'm, I'm not gonna make it. And some thought they spotted Gwen Stacy in Peter's high school in Avengers Endgame, but that was just an extra who gets web pattern skirts at Hot Topic. But maybe part of the reason Orsi parted ways with the Amazing Spider-Man franchise was an interest in Gwen Stacy as a character beyond the death of Gwen Stacy storyline that the Amazing Spider-Man 2 kind of rushed into that movie. But whatever this spinoff film is, it will likely be semi-connected to the MCU, but not so much that Sony would have to co-produce it with Marvel. Uh, unless the next three years go the way I had predicted them to, and Disney just buys out all of Sony the way they did for Fox, and we no longer have to debate what is and is not MCU canon, because everything is. A reminder that New Rockstar is suspending this social distancing period with a rewatch of Marvel's Infinity Saga, starting with Peter Parker surrogate daddy Iron Man, video coming out soon, followed by another semi-canonical overlooked Marvel film, The Incredible Hulk. Yes, it happened, and it was actually pretty great. Watch along with me every Friday on our Discord server by becoming a patron of New Rockstars at Patreon.com. Com slash new rockstars. Comment down below with what you want the Spider Man spinoff film to be. Follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, and subscribe to New Rockstars here on YouTube for breakdowns of everything Marvel. Thanks for watching. Bye.